So we're here with the director of Peep World, uh, a comedy about family. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into the business. I graduated from, when I graduated from NYU, I moved out to Los Angeles because that's where the film business was. I always wanted to be in the film business and make films. So I didn't study that in college. I was going to go to law school at one time. And uh, then when I graduated, I actually got into law school. And I told my parents I was going to do a job in show business which they uh, were supportive of. And uh, I moved out to Los Angeles. I started working on, you know, if you take any job you can in the beginning. And I worked on talk shows, writing questions and answers. And all the time I'd be writing stuff on the side, these sketches, which were turned down by almost everybody, except I was uh, hired by Saturday Night Live. This is the first time they were looking for new writers. I got uh, moved back to New York started work on Saturday Night Live, and it was, it was the first time they had a new cast, and it's where I met my writing partner, David Sheffield, and Eddie Murphy, and the career took off from there. And, you know, you know breaking into the business is, is never easy, right. um, and, uh, you know, you've been successful in, you know, getting involved in, uh, in, various, uh, in various projects, um, and, and with Peep World, it's also a very interesting, it's a, it's a, it's a story about family. But a, a dysfunctional family, right? And uh, wh why is Hollywood so interested in, in Jewish families? Well, I don't know if they're interested in Jewish families. Um, I do think they're interested in families because I think everybody has issues with families. You know, the the, the family in Peep World is Jewish, but they could have been Irish or Italian, and with very minor changes, would have been the same thing. I mean, a friend of mine. There was a line in the movie we wrote that was eventually not we took out, but it was. Um, that families where self-esteem goes to die. And I think for a lot of people, it is that way. You know, I'll talk to my mother about that. And she'll, <laughs> well, she goes, well, it's not self-esteem, but just family, you can be honest with one another. And I said also family can be very hurtful to one another. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people, and I grew up in a really good family, but I think a lot of people grow up in families in, that are not supportive mm -hmm. and are not functional. Mm -hmm. And eventually you learn in the course of life that you can make your family whoever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend your whole life trying to please your family. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this world has in common. Everybody comes from a family. Right. Even orphans come from a family. Right. Not the family or the original family. That's the one thing everybody in, in the universe has. So everybody has a familiar relationship. Everybody has a different kind of relationship with their parents and their brothers and sisters. Right. But everyone has a relationship with them. Right. And you have so many you know, impressive stars uh, in this movie. Um, how did you, how did you, you know, get across the meaning of a family, but also like, there's, a, there's so much comedy in it? Um, how, did, how did you bring about you know, all that uh, connection? Well, a lot of it's in the script, and I met with all the actors individually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a lot of wooing. You know, the film cost a million dollars to make, mm -hmm. and these people were not getting paid. You know, they all could have worked more at Burger King for a week and probably made as much money. <laughs> they were paid. Uh, so, you know, I think it was response to the script, response to hopefully me. And, uh, you know, they were, they, they were interested in the material. I think they found the, the material interesting. Yeah. And I think a lot of them could relate to it. Right. And how did you, like, obviously there's a lot of Jewish references um, in the... In you know, and someone else said that. Uh, some critics said, I don't see where the Jewish references are. Uh, no, I, I actually, I've seen the Jewish. I, like, I thought there were a lot of different Jewish references. Like, like what? Um, I don't know. It's like even like you know the Jews for Jesus explanation. The Jews for Jesus, yeah, that's one. Thing. Right. But otherwise, we just call them the Meyerowitzes. I don't know where. Right. You know, I don't know where they were. Um, you know, it's interesting. Some of the actors were going, "I'm not Jewish." Right. And I'm going, "Well, I'm not. These are not Lower East Side." Right. No. No, for sure. I just actually I thought it added to the comedy to it. You know, like I think there's definitely part like there's sort of like jokes that 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 sort of um, bring about, you know, it's, it has like that Jewiness to it, but not necessarily, let's say, a Jew. But <laughs> it, Jewy. That should have been the... <laughs> right, exactly. But like when Sarah Silverman was, you know, trying to, you know, explain like, you know, the, like the Jews for Jews thing, like, stop, stop rolling your beads. You know, it's not the right time. You know, it's too noisy. You know, it was like really, it was funny. It was a funny scene. Um, it was, was like... That was Sarah's, Sarah Abbott, that line. I thought it was very funny. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, what are you looking for the audience to take away uh, from from the movie? Well, you know, I hope they enjoy it, um, uh, entertained by it, and you know, and if, if it causes them to look upon their own familial relationships in a new way or re-examine them, then that's great too. Mm-hmm. And you know, when, when you look at movies, and this is like I guess a lower, you know, a lower budget movie. Um, how did you actually get this, uh, you know, to the forefront and, and you know, putting it all together? Well, it's very hard. It's very hard when there's not a lot of money and there's not, a, you know, it's, uh, the studio, the studio system. You know, they just want to make big blockbuster movies, and so they not interested in making a small little, mm-hmm. and, and they don't know really how to distribute. It's not the business they're in. Mm-hmm. We're good, we're good, bad, or indifferent. It's not the business they're in. Mm-hmm. But you just got to find people that are passionate about it. And, you know, it, no one does this project for the money. Right. Like, how do you, you know, for our audience out there who are, who are interested in, you know, sell, you know, bringing ideas to the forefront and trying to sell scripts, what would be your uh, advice, you know, for these types of indie uh, independent films and, and trying to make them a uh, reality? I can't give you one piece of advice because there's no simple one way. You know, I... I I always quote Malcolm X, which is by any means necessary. You just have to find out however which way you can get the movie made. Mm -hmm. That's the way you do it. There is no simple road. There's no simple way of how to make it. I think most people who made made it in this business, or successful in any business, have incredible work ethics. And they just don't. You have to be resilient. You have to be able to bounce back from rejection. Mm -hmm. Be able to handle rejection real well Mm because that's Yeah, it's uh... and and there and and passion. You need passion, and you need, but you also need the product to back it up. Right, and you know and when you first. Re- I meet I meet so many people go. I'm creative. I'm creative, and I go. Well, what have you done? Can right. I see anything? No, but I'm very creative. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well. When you first read Peep World, what was your first impressions? I liked. It. I could relate to it. I mean, you know, there there were. They were a change I made within the script, but Peter Hamilton wrote a very good script. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want, this is something I'd like to be part of. Mm-hmm. I remember reading on a plane, and uh, I finished reading it, and a woman said, turned to me and sitting next to me, and goes, You must have enjoyed what you're <laughs> smiling throughout. I go, Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, that's great. No, I, you know, I think in movies today, actually, you know, in independent uh, films and lower budget, you really can see. Um, the the effort that is played, um, and you can see like the emotion and, and the comedy, um, and, sure. I, and it and I think that's just, that's what sets a lot of these projects um, from these I guess bigger blockbusters because you can see the creativity I think more so in these type of films. Sure. And uh, you know I just don't care about robots. Right. I don't. Right. <laughs> I just don't. Right. I, I, and the movies from another time and another dimension. They just don't interest me, and, I, and that's and that's fine for the a huge audience for those movies. Right. But I wish they would make more than just those type of movies. Right. Where do you see independent films going in the next like three or four years? You know, it's very hard to see. I see. I see a less. Um, sadly, I think a less and less theatrical life, mm-hmm. more video on demand, that sort of thing. Different mm-hmm. ways of showing it. The reality is, there, there isn't much. The audience doesn't go out mm-hmm. for these movies. They mm-hmm. don't the theater. They don't run to the theaters to see them. The theaters will drop a film very quickly, mm-hmm. or immediately the first week. So things aren't given a chance to gain mm-hmm. word of mouth. And mm-hmm. to open a film was very expensive. Right. So you're stuck with that conundrum. Mm-hmm. I think there, there are going to be different ways of ways people be involved in different types of movies. Mm-hmm. Or they add in great home theater systems and right. video demand and all that stuff. You know, people go. Why should I go to the theater? And pay? Right. But even even now, like there's been a surge in video on demand, and how that market is is, yeah. is exploding. Where a lot of um, a lot of films, I would say, didn't even do so well in the theaters, are having a life of its own. Oh, sure. On vi- video on demand. That's the, that's the one good thing. Right. Someone told me it's it's true. Films have a much longer life now. Than right. That's true. And there are films that didn't, came out initially and didn't do all that well. Uh, box office wise, mm-hmm. 
yet it had an incredible cultural influence, mm-hmm. and it stayed much longer in the cultural zeitgeist mm-hmm. than uh, than films that made a, might have made hundreds of million dollars. Right. No, yeah. Well, it's it's exciting because you know that you know there's a lot of creative people out there trying to make films. Yeah, people are trying. You know, every, you know everybody. I know it's hard to believe, but um, when everybody makes a film, they're trying to make the best possible version mm-hmm. of that film they can. Mm-hmm. You know, people do you know conceivably you know uh, you know like another, like another horror film. Right. It's still trying to make the best version of that. Right. People really do, and sometimes it doesn't work out. There, there's so many ways a film can go wrong. Right, no, for sure. It's a mir- It's more, it's not a miracle. People ask why aren't there more good movies. I'm amazed that there are any good movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm just grateful for that. Right, yeah, that's right. And what are some other projects that you're, uh, you're working on? I'm working on a few documentaries. I'm working on writing a feature now, which I hope to direct. And I've two, written a couple of studio movies, so I'm, I'm keeping busy. Right. And, you know, someone's got to pay for it, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Uh, continue uh, your good work. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Right. Bye-bye. I want to tell you something, Nate. When you're successful, there are always people who will tear you down. It's something that your brothers and your sister wouldn't understand. Rehab, how many times? Three. How many nose jobs did you have? One, one. and then one for maintenance. Thanks, Dad. There were four Meyer with children. Jack was the responsible son. Sherry was a would-be artist, actress, and singer-songwriter. Nathan, a writer, was the family's only success. And Joel was the black sheep. What do you need now, Joel? I'm going to put you on the phone with Maduk from Sudan. And uh, all you have to do is give him your credit card number. Wait, do I ride with you? Once a year, they gathered to celebrate their father's birthday. But this year, a book came out that exposed their family's secrets. I just want to make a toast to my fabulous son, Nate, and the great success he's having with his book, Peep World. Pardon me if I don't toast to a man who's ruined my life. What did I do? Did I make you more unemployed? He stabbed us all in the back, you mother- It is a great honor to present to you the new voice of a generation, Nathan Meyerowitz. Peep World, number one best-selling novel. Welcome, Nathan Meyerowitz. Everywhere I look, Peep World and Peep World. It's just a book. And a movie. They're shooting right outside my apartment. Action! (laughs) Everything I wrote in Peep World is true. You're in the part about your sister sleeping with the entire cast of Tony and Tina's wedding? She really loved that show. If you didn't read your own son's novel? Well, come on, what do I have to read it for? I lived it. Do you think that I'm a loser? Who said that? My father, my whole family, pretty much everyone I know. Brother's on TV again. Dad's proud of you, as long as people are patting him on the back. Can I get a shot of something? Anything. That was amazing. It's just sex, Nathan. Premature ejaculation is a common problem. You don't come off so great in the book either. Hello? Hey, it's Joel. Hey, Jack. We're going to have a baby. What? Look, yeah. I am. All this over a book? Got cousins that shot each other and got over it. As you can see, Peep World is a really interesting film. has some uh, fantastic stars. It really brings family's function to the forefront. This is Aaron Herman, and thanks for watching.